I think it's suddenly dawning on Israel that this war with Hamas is part of something much bigger, a trap that could set the world in flames. And I don't think you're being told that clearly enough. Israel last week mobilized 300,000 reservists for a land invasion of Gaza to wipe out the Hamas terrorist group that rules there, an attack that keeps getting delayed. First Saturday, then Sunday, now Wednesday. And you might have noticed US President Joe Biden rushed to Israel today, landed a few minutes ago, despite the danger that puts him that it puts him in. We're told it's there to show support. He's already sent warships to the coast as well. So there's something that's clearly alarming these people gathering from the delay. And I just don't mean the obvious, you know, that the very least, of course, Israel would be wondering how it can invade without having the 199 Jewish hostages in Gaza killed. How can it invade without killing so many civilians? And Hamas, by the way, has had years to prepare kill zones for the Israelis. But there's more. Russian President Vladimir Putin, he this week, meanwhile, flew to China to see his big ally, China's dictator, on a prearranged visit to talk about expanding their influence. And both have taken a hard line against Israel here and for the Palestinians. And you see, this war with Israel actually suits China. It suits Russia. It drags in the US to another conflict and takes the heat of Russia over its invasion in Ukraine. China, well, China, it's using this to get even more support from Muslim countries. And it likes the US being distracted by yet another war, Ukraine, and now this, just when China's considering a third one, an invasion of Taiwan. Because the fact is, there is now in the world a new axis of evil, an alliance of tyrannies, Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea. Iran and North Korea, all anti-democratic, they're supplying Russia with weapons for its invasion of Ukraine. China is giving Russia diplomatic help. China's dictator even gave a big reception to Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas now. And there are also reports, of course, that Russia may have trained Hamas in its drone attacks on Israel. And now Iran is threatening to attack Israel by the terrorist groups it pays, like Hezbollah. And I don't think our leaders have explained clearly enough we are on the brink of a world war. Maybe they don't dare. But I say the world right now looks more dangerous than since World War II. And if this invasion of Gaza goes bad, how do you think the vast number of Muslims now in the West are going to react. Joining me from New York is our regular commentator, filmmaker, Armie Horowitz. Armie Horowitz, thanks for your time. You're off to Israel uh, next week to do your, your thing. Uh, you're, you're Jewish. I don't think many people realise, well, this is how I see it. As with Nazi Germany, first come the attacks on the Jews, and when they're defeated... Then come the attacks, uh, the wider attack on Western civilization. That's how I see it. If we abandon Israel, the West is next. How do you feel about that? Oh, you said that brilliantly, and it's so true. Israel is really the, the canary in the coal mine, right? This, they have no intention of stopping in Israel because Israel really isn't the issue. The land of Israel is not the issue. The issue is these Islamic radicals, right, I'm, I'm obviously referring to the radicals, believe that the life that we lead is a life that needs to be eliminated. And Israel happens to be the closest port for them, right? It happens to sit in a place where a lot of these Islamic radicals reside. And therefore, they are in uh, the strike zone. But we, look, the attacks that we've seen throughout Europe and the United States over the years, 9-11, these are all connected attacks. They are not separate attacks. Like when, when people, it's so interesting. When I interview people who hate Israel, I always ask, how do you feel about America? And the answers are always the same. I have never, I have yet to come across a hater of Israel who doesn't equally, if not more ferociously, hate the United States. You have to understand that ultimately, there's a reason why Iran always says, Israel is the small Satan, the U.S. is the large Satan. And by the way, the U.S. is just a proxy for the West in general. That when they say the U.S., they mean the West. But they say the U.S. because the U.S. is the most powerful entity in the West. So make no mistake about it. 
the hatred of Israel is intertwined inexorably with the hatred of the United States and the hatred of the West in general. Yeah, look, I've just been reading a, a great essay from one of my, the, the greatest journalists I know, uh, Joseph Roth, uh, Jewish, German, fled Germany in 1933 when Hitler took over, and he wrote that year, so prescient. He said, you know, we Jews, we stood in the front row of the defenders of Europe, and we were the first to be defeated. That, I think, is uh, what is at stake right here, all over again, history repeating itself. But then when you see these protests, Army, against Israel and brackets against Jews uh, in so many capital cities in the West over the uh, last week or so, what does that tell you? Uh, it's just disgusting. I, I don't know how else to say this. Uh, and I went, to these I went to these protests in the past. I went to the protests we had uh, this past week. And, and, you know, if you listen to the words that they say, you know, it's so funny. I went to the Columbia protest, where Columbia University had a, had a major protest. I was able to get in. And there was, of course, a counter-protest, a pro-Israel protest. If you listen to the words being said at the pro-Hamas uh, uh, rally by these students, you hear the vitriol of violence. You hear their, their hatred of everything we just spoke about. And then if you look over, just walk over just, you know, 30, 40 feet to, to, the, to the Israeli counter, the Jewish counter protests, Israeli counter protests, all you hear are songs of peace and love. Literally, there, there's, the speeches gave no indication of hate, even though Israel and the Jews faced the worst atrocities one can imagine just a few days before. But you didn't hear words of hate and disgust and violence. You heard words and singing of peace. But when you went to the pro-Palestinian camp, all you heard were words of violence. And by the way, you know the, the chant they kept saying over and over, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. What does that mean, Andrew? Let's break that down. From the river, from the river Jordan to the sea, the Mediterranean. Guess what's in between those two things, Andrew? The state of Israel. They have no interest in having just the West Bank and Gaza as their homeland, as they purport to? No, they, this is a genocidal chant that you've heard for years from the river to the sea. They want to, the, 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 this has never changed from the moment there was a partition of Israel when the British said, we're gonna partition this thing in half. We're gonna give half the Jews where the Jews live and have lived for thousands of years, and the other half we're gonna give to the Palestinians or to the Arabs who live there. And guess what? They didn't want that. They then started a genocidal war to push the Jews into the sea. Well, guess what? Fast forward 70 years, Andrew, and nothing has changed. They are still chanting those same words. Look, I'm afraid that is the case as I see it. Uh, let's just uh, switch quickly to uh, what's actually going on now. Joe Biden flying to Israel. That's a big call, you know, US president uh, in a kind of war zone. Uh, well, you know, good on him. But what do you think that's about? Because uh, I find it interesting that the land war uh, on Gaza has not started, despite being, you know, us being told it could start last weekend. Yeah, look, I, look, as you know, I have criticized Joe Biden uh, very vocally on your show and other platforms. Not a fan of the man as president of the United States. Having said that, it actually makes gives me gr great pleasure to say that Joe Biden has been through this a steadfast supporter of the state of Israel. No qualifications. Um, he has said all the right things. The fact that he's coming to Israel at a time during war, you do not see presidents do that. They do not fly into war zones. This is, a, a, this is him showing his steadfast friendship and support for the state of Israel. Uh, I appreciate that. I'm sure all Israelis appreciate that. I think it's a wonderful thing. Look, there have been calls from his left, very vociferous calls for him to back off and to tell Israel to back off. And you've heard horrible things coming from the hard left, terrible lies coming from his own members of his own party. And, and he has thus far withstood that pressure, has said all the right things, and I am very glad for Joe Biden what he's done for Israel. 
Yes, I give them a huge tick, a huge tick. Army Horowitz, thank you so much indeed for your time and uh, keep safe on your trip next week. Thank you, Andrew.